What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another match preview for you guys today. In this preview we're going to be talking about the West Brom Chelsea match, we're going to go through predictions, team news, the last couple games, head to head record and we're going to end it with a score prediction just as we usually do on every preview and to be honest I don't think you guys would expect anything different but yeah. It is West Brom versus Chelsea. We're going to go into this in this video before I start this video. As per usual, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button. Press the subscribe button as well because the road to 20k is still going strong and I need every single one of you guys to help me out on this. So if you guys haven't done so already, smash that button and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever I release any new content on this channel. Now, West Brom versus Chelsea trip back to the Hawthorns and we do love a trip to the West to West Brom we've been undefeated there since 2012 and I'm sure you lot remember 2017 winning the league there Mishi Batshuayi absolute scenes at the Hawthorns so yeah we're traveling back to a ground that we usually enjoy going to to face a newly promoted West Brom which I'll be inside who are eager to get their first Premier League points of the season Meanwhile, on our hand as well, we're looking to try and get back to winning ways as well after a frustrating performance against Liverpool. I say performance, more frustrating result. And to even call it a frustrating result against Premier League champions does show how far we've gone over the case of last season. You remember the game uh, back last season when we faced them at home and we did only lose 2-1. And yeah, if Mason Mounts buries that chance later on in the game, it does go to 2-2. But Liverpool were the more dominant side for ages and it wasn't a case of us wanting to sit deep and just let them be dominant. They were just running rings around us the entire first half and we just couldn't control that. This game looked like a much different Chelsea side. Defensively, we were a lot more solid going forward. There wasn't really as much chances, but we were trying to play more defensively minded. We were trying to focus more on the defensive aspect of our game and try and hit them on the counter. And I thought the whole first half everything was working, but then the Christensen red card came and happened. It just threw off all of our momentum. And because of that, we were down to 10 men and Kepa Tax came into effect. And we know when Kepa Tax comes into effect, there is only one team that is going to be suffering and it is Chelsea. That is not going to be an issue for us anymore because we know Eduard Mendy is through the door. We can get gas now. We actually have a goalkeeper between the sticks. And it has felt with Chelsea over the last few weeks that we haven't necessarily reached our full potential with the side. I mean, if you look at the players right now, half of our new signings haven't featured in the Premier League this season. Ziyech has barely played off the injury against Brighton in the friendly match. Thiago Silva's just been getting back to full match fitness. And Ben Chilwell's just been nursing off an injury from last season at Leicester. Even Kai Havertz, who I will say, he did a very good job at helping his confidence with that brilliant hat-trick against Barnsley yesterday. But I still think in the case of the Premier League, it's going to be a while to see him as confident, as confident and influential best. I don't think we're going to see that for a while, really. I think you're still going to see him play well. I haven't seen a bad performance from Kai Havertz yet. But I know everyone's looking for this impactful goals and assists coming, churning out of him. And we haven't seen that recently. We haven't seen that impact. We haven't seen those vintage performances from him yet. But they are coming. But that's why I say this, this Chelsea side isn't its full potential yet. And we're facing a West Bromwich Albion side that are eager for points as well. They have had a really brutal return back to Premier League, to Premier League football. They got smacked 3-0 by Leicester in the opening day of the season and then lost 5-2 to Everton as well with Kieran Gibbs sent off for a push on James Rodriguez and Slaven Bilic getting sent off a couple minutes later for arguing with Mike Dean because you already know when it's Mike Dean. If you, if you do something to him with a camera there, he's going to do the most that he can to try and look good in front of the camera. Now, I will say, this isn't the same West Brom that we've seen from uh, Pulis Ball days or OG Mikel Arteta days where they stick 11 man and a dot and a double decker bus in front of the goal just to try and prevent them from conceding. This is a much more different West Brom side. They're a lot more expansive. They like actually playing football now, even though I'm not going to try and drop this football purist mentality because we're Chelsea. We literally won the Champions League playing that way. Their game is the game, even if it is frustrating and boring as hell to watch. Their game is the game. But this is a much more expansive West Brom and Chalbian side. They're more daring. They're more willing to take risks. But that also does mean they're more easier to get at. And I will say easier to an extent. Our head-to-head -head record is amazing against West Brom. Which also, to be honest, you do have to expect. But this is going to be a very risk-taking side. And they are going to try and take issues with us. 
They have brought in a lot of decent signings as well. Callum Robertson, Grady Diangana. We know how much West Ham fans have been annoyed about him going away. And even Mark Noble been putting tweets about it as well. Matias Pereira, who was very key to their promotions, to their promotion season last season. He's been brought back into the squad as well. And they've also got a little bit of Chelsea past and present there. We know Conor Gallagher's been sent there on loan for the season. Won't play against us, obviously, because of parent, parent club rules and stuff like that. But Branislav Ivanovic is also back. One-year contract from Zenit St. Petersburg. And he might even make his debut as well because of injuries and suspensions. And obviously, it's great to see Branislav Ivanovic back in Premier League football. But if I want to think about this from the Chelsea point of view, he can definitely get got at. If this is anything like 15-16 Branislav Ivanovic, we should be all over his ass. And I say that knowing that he's a Chelsea legend, and I've got all the love in the world for, the, for Ivanovic. But the game really is the game. And if he is playing... We can definitely get him. There's going to be goals in this game. I am optimistic. I mean, we should be. It's West Brom. I feel like that's a bummy statement to even say that. Yes, I am optimistic. Head-to-head -head back records, like I said, back Chelsea as well. We haven't lost any of our last five meetings and we haven't even conceded a goal in our last four. Like I already said about the Hawthorns, we haven't lost there since 2012. Before 2012, though, we hated going there. I think in 2012, we went there twice and both our managers got sacked off the games against West Brom. So, it has got a bit of history of being a bogey ground, but nothing too much to worry about. Um, let's go into team news. We're starting with West Brom, Carl Bartley is injured, so Branislav Ivanovic could be making his debut at centre-back. Conor Gallagher isn't eligible because you can't play against your parent club in the Premier League. That, loan, that doesn't happen with loan clubs, it's not UEFA, so that won't be happening. Kieran Gibbs is also suspended after the red card against Everton. And Higazi is out, but at least that, do that means he doesn't get to kick seven shades of blue out of our players like he did in the last time West Brom were in the Premier League. Chelsea news, Mendy sadly is not going to be playing because he hasn't, he hasn't passed all the tests in time. So that means one goalkeeper has to start and the willy must rise because keep Kepa as far away from the starting eleven as humanly possible. Um, who else? Ziyech and Pulisic are still out. Lampard said they should be back within the next week or two. But pro they're progressing well, but they ain't going to be ready yet. So that just is what it is. Um, Thiago Silva and Ben Chilwell do look like they're going to be fit to start though. Ben Chilwell didn't start the game against Barnsley either, so I do think he will get this game time. I do think he'll start. Thiago Silva as well, only got the 60 minutes as well, so I do think he'll start as well. And yeah, that's optimistic news as, at least to end off the team news. Um, we'll go into starting 11 quickly. I'm going to start with Willy Caballero in goal. As I already said, just don't play Kepa anymore because teams know what to do with this guy. Just have a shot, hit a corner, and you know he's not going to hit it. So put Willy Caballero in. He had a great performance against Barnsley. Couple decent saves. A lot of them went straight at him. But like I said, over the last year or so, the standards of goalkeeping are literally dropped to the floor. So he had a good performance. Build on it. If Mendy isn't going to start, just play Willy Caballero. Right back, Reese James. Two great performances from him so far to start the season. Have, have to throw him in again. That's just it. Done. And in defence with him, I'm going to go for Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva. This is the partnership that I've wanted to see ever since Thiago Silva stepped foot in England. And I think tomorrow is going to be the day we get to see it. Thiago Silva might not last the full 90. He's still getting back to full match fitness. But even if he starts the first 60, I just want to see how his impact is on the team. Kurt Zuma as well, because I think he negates any lack of athleticism that Thiago Silva may have. I think it's still a doubt because of the way he takes care of his body. But if there's any of those issues, Thiago, um, Kurt Zuma can, can account for that. His recovery tackles, his speed will be able to account for that. So he has to start as well. I think both of their styles of play mesh really well together. Left back, Ben Chilwell as well. Didn't start the game on Wednesday, so I think he has to start now if he is going to be fit to play any part of the game. I would like to see him just start initially. And in midfield, we're going to go for Kante, Jorginho and Kovacic. I feel like this is going to be one of those games where we have a lot of control of. So I want a player like Jorginho who can control the tempo of the game in there. Yes, he lacks athleticism, but I think as long as we have control of the game, he is going to have a good performance and that's where he is at his peak. Kante as well, just... Again, undroppable at this point. Same thing with Mateo Kovacic. So they both have to start. And in mid, uh, uh, as our front three, I'm going to go for actually Timo Werner on the left. Only because 
That Havertz and Tammy Abraham link up was so nasty on Wednesday. I don't care if it was Barnsley. That performance was excellent from the pair of them. I'd like to see him build on it. I know Tammy Abraham likes playing in the middle, but he does like to roam into the right sometimes. And we saw with Kai Havertz, we'll pl probably play him on the right. But he did play that centre forward role as well against Liverpool, with Timo Werner coming in off the left as well. So that's the three I want to go for. It, it's, it might be a bit out there, you lot might not agree with me, but I do want to see this. I want to see the Tammy and Timo link up. I want to see the Tammy and Havertz link up. And I want that, those three link it up together. They've linked up together so well, those three, in, the, in different twos. Like, we've, I've already said about Havertz and, and Abraham. H Havertz literally joined us because of his link up with Timo Werner. And we've all been speaking about how Werner can link up with a target man. So, very interested to see what happens if we put, the, if we put these three together. Is it a beautiful disaster? Or is it just a disaster? Or is it just beautiful? You lot, you lot let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on the score predictions, line up. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything I've said. Personally, I'm going to go for 3-1. Should we say 3-1? I think 3-1's a fair score to go. Yeah, I'll go 3-1 Chelsea. Guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the watch along and for the live phone. And take care and up the Chelsea.